My name is Sue and I'm the Vicar of Greenstead and Colchester St Anne's and I'd like to welcome you to the Vicarage for this service of Holy Communion for Maunday Thursday. Um, welcome to um, our churches, the people from our churches, St Andrews, St Matthews and St Anne, but also a very warm welcome to those who are joining us um, from Black Notley, Great Notley and Rain churches. It's wonderful to have this Churches Together opportunity digitally. Probably the first, I'd like to think so. I'm going to hand you over to my husband, Philip, who will be taking the service this evening. And so, uh, welcome. And um, as we, this is the service on Monday, Thursday, where we commemorate the starting of the Last Supper, the Last Supper that Jesus had with his, his disciples, um, we thought that it would be really lovely to celebrate it actually here in the dining room. So we're in the dining room of the vicarage and, uh, and this is our normal dining room table. And um, yeah, so it, it seems really appropriate to celebrate it in this way. So um, I'm hoping that you will have seen uh, an order of service. Um, if not, just listen to the prayers. Sue will be saying all the people's parts. And if you have got the order of service, it's in bold print. Uh, the other thing just to say is we are uh, firmly intending to make sure that we have got uh, finished or that there is a break so that we can all join in with the clapping for the NHS and carers at eight o'clock. So if that's what you'd like to do, if that's what you normally do, we will make sure that everybody, and us included, will join in with that. So let's just still our hearts and minds for a moment as we prepare to worship our loving Father. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and, and also, also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. Amen. And let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. We have our first reading. Our first reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. 
having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are their messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Our Monday Thursday reflection um, has been written by one of our new, uh, soon to be, I should think, uh, authorised lay preachers. Uh, and this is written by Paul, so I'm just going to read it as he has uh, sent it to me. But I do thank all our lay preachers who have contributed this week to our services. Paul writes. We moved home on Monday, March the 2nd, before the idea of a lockdown had even been considered. The flat we have moved into is in a a poor state of repair and requires a lot of work, so we planned for the initial weeks that we would not use the decrepit kitchen. We were going to rely on using the borrowed larder fridge in our microwave to eat only microwave ready meals and fresh fruit and veg. Second, to eat at our children's home to eat out with our friends as is our normal practice. Number four, visit family in the North and Midlands. Number five, take some short breaks away. With the lockdown, two, three, four and five have gone by the board. We had run down our food stocks prior to the move. We also absolutely refuse to hoard any food. So every three or four days I go out foraging at Tesco's and maybe M&S. I've always managed to get enough. Food plays an important part in our lives. In our modern lives, we only have to worry about paying for it. We do not have to forage or plant or hunt. We need food, for eventually we would die without fuel and nourishment. 
once we have had a sufficient food, it then plays a different role in our lives. We build our family relationships around the dining room table and talking as a family. This is one of the healthiest things a family can do together. Professionals tell us this is a crucial activity in the raising of children. Grandma always knew best. Similarly, eating out with our friends consolidates friendship. Celebrations in all societies are based around shared food. Christ used this on Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday, as we call it, is the day before Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was meeting with his twelve friends, we now call the Apostles. He knew that this would be the last time they would eat together. He wanted them to do something after his death that they could remember him by. He took the food and drink that was always readily available. That is the bread and wine. He broke off bits of the bread and gave each of them a piece and did the same with the wine. He said, do this in memory of me. When we meet to worship, we share a communion, a coming together with Christ by symbolically eating his body and blood in the form of bread and wine. This simple act of celebrating together consolidates our relationship with Christ. We remember that he died for us. We are now challenged by a lockdown. We cannot eat together except with those whom we live with. How are we to commune with others in this situation? We could try for maybe one meal a day, saying a grace before that meal. Remembering how it is by the grace of God that we live in a society that has no shortage of food. Giving thanks that we live in a society that has the resources, both people and material, to fight an epidemic. And giving thanks for the people that work to grow and produce our food. Food is a precious gift. Let us relish it and cherish it. Amen. Amen. A lovely sort of reflection on this, where we celebrate a meal and the food that was shared. But as we heard in the Gospel reading, there wasn't just the food that was shared, the bread and the wine, which we heard in the passage from Corinthians. There was the washing of the feet. Now, when Sue and I were trying to put this service together, we thought, washing of feet? How are we going to manage that? And so we decided that we wouldn't do that. And so I've put it down as a commemoration of the washing of the feet, uh, because actually what we're going to do is we're going to wash our hands. And whereas in the traditional times of Jesus, washing the feet would have been the standard thing to have done um, before a meal, in our society, you don't wash your feet, but you do wash your hands. And at this time, when we've been told to wash our hands so frequently, it takes on a really even more poignant uh, symbol, I think, at any rate. So I'm not going to ask you to wash your hands, um, but just think about it as I wash Sue's hands and then Sue washes my hands, and just imagine that water on your hands. I should add that uh, this is a symbolic washing of hands. We're not going to do it for a minimum of 20 seconds and all of that sort of thing. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that we, what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
We now have our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us. And, and humble, humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us. And, and unite us. us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. And, and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and, and fill us, us with, with your love. love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and, and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. And, and welcome, welcome all your children, children into, into paradise. paradise. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. And if there is somebody near to you, then exchange with them a sign of that peace. If you are on your own, then think of somebody you love and just share that peace of the peace of the Lord with them in your hearts and minds. And peace be with you. At the Eucharist, we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our ancestors, but we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that as he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate this feast. The Lord is here. His spirit, spirit is, is with, with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and, taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again, the feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and took bread. He praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is a mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as a mark of our unity, let us join together in saying the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. We'll just take, as we can't all share in this Eucharist together, We'll just take a moment of silence um, just to reflect on the real presence, the presence of our Lord here with us today. And as we look on the bread and the wine, we remember the Last Supper of Jesus with his disciples. And then after a short period of time, you have got in your order of service the act of spiritual reception. Sue will read the last of those three little prayers. And then I'll say the prayer after communion and we'll stop there so we can go outside to join with the clapping for the NHS and carers. And then what we will do is Sue and I will then come back and we will video the last bit, the stripping of the altar and the dismissal so that you can then come back and join with that once we've uploaded it onto Facebook and YouTube. So just a moment of quiet prayer.
Jesus, as the hem of your garment touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body, so may the soul of your servant be healed. For though I cannot receive you in the sacrament, I can, through this offering of my prayer, receive you in my heart. Grant this for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption, for you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. 